Hello everyone, and welcome to the first official episode of the Wool Through the Trees knitting podcast. My name is Katie, and you may have seen me in other contexts as the Knit Witch, but we have officially rebranded, so now you will just know me as Katie from Wool Through the Trees. I do have the windows open today. You may hear the birds chirping, some wind chimes chiming, um, if that's all right with you. If not, I'm sorry. This is, you know, my life in the middle of the woods. So you're gonna get to hear all the sounds that I get to hear. It's about 60 degrees, it's before 9 a.m. So we're already off to a great start. Today's Thursday, May 9th, and it feels like summer. So exciting. As I was setting up today, I did see a very large wolf spider. So we're gonna try and make this a quick one so that I don't, you know, interrupt his domain for longer than I have to. So I do follow the typical knitting podcast format where I start with finished objects, whips, spinning, yarn dyeing, if I have any. Um, today we have no finished objects, unfortunately, so we will just jump right into whips. We'll get the big one out of the way first. <laughs> this is um, a sweater that I'm knitting. This is called PhD Candidate. It's a free colorwork sweater pattern by Hannah Mann. Sorry, I'm trying to arrange it because I have two different balls of wool attached and my needles. So, <laughs> um, I teased you guys last time and I was like, I might have this done because I finished the first sleeve in a day. Let me just hold it up so you can kind of see what we're working with here. So it's this beautiful, I don't know if you can see it, beautiful colorwork sweater. It's on small needles at the bottom, so a little scrunched. Um, I do have one sleeve complete, if I could actually hold it up. <laughs> one sleeve is done. I am working on the second sleeve. This one, okay, a little bit of a story to go with this. I actually almost finished it uh, last weekend because I was like, I'm gonna have this sweater done for the next episode. Um, I got through this like diamond color work motif and I checked my gauge and my row gauge on the second sleeve was like massively off versus the first sleeve so they were gonna be like different lengths and I was like oh no no we can't have that the first sleeve I did like I mentioned this last time I did the whole thing in a day um, but like I did all the color work I was like cozy in bed I had my lamp on I was listening to an audiobook it was just like a very chill environment I was like so cozy and I was just like knitting away and then the second sleeve I tried to do while I was like, it was a weekend, so I was like sitting on the couch in the living room and I was talking with my family and just wasn't really paying attention. And so my row gauge got like, I'm a loose knitter to begin with, but especially loose in color work because I do two handed color work. And so, yeah, it just, it grew like crazy. And I was like, nope, I'm just gonna rip it out. So I have to get myself back into that same mindset where I did the first sleeve and kind of just cozy up with a little audiobook, all the lights off, just one little lamp and, you know, get my stitches nice and tight. So this is whip number one once I finish the sleeve. I, I, I think I want to make this cropped. Um, I'm knitting the size three in the pattern, which is a large to extra large size, um, typically. I knit like somewhere around like a small to medium size and patterns but I really want this to be an oversized like sweatshirt vibe type of sweater so once I finish the arms I'm still debating on whether or not I want to make it cropped I feel like making it hit like right at the top of like where my jeans would sit would be a very good idea I tried to do that with my last sweater the cloud watching sweater which is a pattern by Suzanne Summer it's a gorgeous gorgeous like brioche mohair sweater <laughs> amazing um it just grew a lot more than i thought it would so i knit it to the top of my pants and it grew to like the bottom of my butt so <laughs> not i feel like i have a hole in my wardrobe so hopefully i can get that one to fit and sit where i want it to so that is whip number one whip number two we're gonna do our only sock whip people usually know me as the girl with infinite socks. Um, 
So this is a half finished object. Last week I was like, I'll show you the done one first. These are DK weight socks I am knitting for my dad. Last week I was like here on the leg um, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I should rip them out because they're for my dad. So I want to do ribbing on the leg to make it stretchy, but I'm writing the pattern for these. So I'm like, I don't want to do ribbing because then it'll throw off my numbers for yardage. So I just trucked through, did a two by two ribbed cuff, which is like my nemesis, plain leg, plain foot, contrasting toe and heel. I am on the second one. I am fairly certain I'm about to start the ribbing. I'll have to recount my rows. It's on DPN, so I can't like stretch it the same way, but I'll have to recount my rows. Um, I think I'm either like one row away or I'm on the cuff start. So second sock, contrasting toe and heel again. Funny story with this, I ran out of yarn for the contrasting heel. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, I can tell where I ran out. Right there. Literally two rows. Yep, ran out with two rows left to go on the heel flap. That was very sad. I do these toe up with a heel flap and guess it. I can't remember if I said that or not. That's why I'm writing the pattern because um, to my knowledge there is no DK weight toe up heel flap and guess it sock pattern to exist so hoping to be the first <laughs> so I ran out and so I had to dye up another one and so then I started knitting the leg about to hit the cuff just very glad that I didn't decide to do a contrasting cuff because then I definitely would have ran out I was playing a little bit of yarn chicken and I lost so there's that these will probably these will probably be done today, if I'm being honest. Like while I'm editing or whatever, I'll probably get those done. So almost a finished object for you. Another almost finished object. There's gonna be a lot of needles clanking because this is also on DPNs. This is my, the first muscle faker of this podcast, the second one that I've ever made. This is the blue one. <laughs> This is my blue muscle faker. Uh, the muscle faker is just what I call it because it's very similar to the muscle burra hat, which is a pattern by Isolde Teague. And I just don't like the crown shaping of that pattern. So I make up my own crown shaping. Same concept. This is the blue one, as I have dubbed it. Um, it's, it was a swatch skein when I was testing out some acid dyes. This is just a single ply fingering weight wool yarn. First crown, you do the increases, you do the body of the hat, and I am on the decreases of the crown. If you saw how much yarn I have left on this, you would laugh at me. Because I think I'm also going to lose the game of yarn chicken on this hat. I don't know which episode I set it in, but I was like, oh, I started the decreases, finished the decreases, I had so much yarn left, I ripped out my decreases, restarted them further up, like I knit more body rows and then did the decreases, and now I think I'm gonna run out. So I think I knit too many. <laughs> um, that's okay, because I, from my first ever muscle faker, I have like three grams left of the single ply fingering weight that I used for that. So I will just have a small white nipple on the top of my hat and I'm fine with that. Cause you know what? It's double ended. I could just stuff this end inside the other and no one would know. So muscle faker number one, almost done. We'll probably lose yarn chicken on that, but you know, you never know. I might not lose. I might have just enough. This is the last whip, which is kind of depressing. Um, this is my third total muscle faker. This is a pink one. <laughs> Same single ply fingering weight base. I kind of got a lot done on this. This is like the main thing I worked on. Yeah, it is the main thing I worked on because I just remembered what I freaking did last weekend. We watched the Kentucky Derby, which was on Saturday. Best two minutes of sports, as it is called. 
um, and rightfully so. I feel, you know, so empowered. Not that I am a gambler <laughs> at all, uh, but I was reading the horse's names that morning over coffee and I was like, ooh, I like Mystic Dan. And at the time of me reading that list of competitors, um, his odds were 50 to 1, which is not good. <laughs> well, it's good. It's good if you're betting on him and he wins, but it's not good odds for him winning the race. So his odds were 50 to 1 and I was like, I don't care about his odds. I like Mystic Dan. Guess who freaking won the Kentucky Derby? That's right, Mystic Dan. <laughs> if only I had gambled, you know? That's what they all say. Hindsight is 2020. But anyways, I knit this while we watched the best two minutes of sports. Um, and right after the Kentucky Derby finished, I was like, well, mm, I want to watch Seabiscuit. So we watched Seabiscuit. Love Tobey Maguire. Um, so we watched Seabiscuit Saturday night, and because I love Tobey Maguire so much, I was like, you know what we have to watch next? Molly's Game. So I'm sure most people know what Seabiscuit is. That movie's over 20 years old now, I think. I think, yeah, 2003. Um, Molly's Game is more recent. I think that one's 2018. It's an amazing movie. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend it. It's about this girl, Molly Bloom, woman, lady, this person, Molly Bloom, who run, ran, whew, if only I could speak, <laughs> Molly Bloom, who ran a very underground kind of poker ring. I don't know a good way to tell you about it without spoiling the movie. It is true events, but basically it was like a very celebrity focused kind of poker game that started in Hollywood and then moved to New York. So the point of me telling you about this is Michael Sarah's character in Molly's Game is based on Tobey Maguire, which is why I wanted to watch it after watching Seabiscuit, because Tobey Maguire is in Seabiscuit, and then I was like, we need to watch Molly's Game, because... Okay, that is... <laughs> that is all my whips! <laughs> Go watch Molly's Game if you haven't. It's on Netflix if you have Netflix. It's really very good. Another one of my favorite Tobey Maguire movies is Pawn Sacrifice, but I don't think that's streaming anywhere, which is why I did not watch it on Sunday. Let's move on to spinning, because I think I'm checking my notes, but I'm pretty sure that's my only other thing to talk about today. So this is also, this is another kind of like half finished object and frickin' sound the bells because this thing is done um it's not really done it's one single ply that is done let me actually show it to you so this is 100 percent merino from paradise fibers in the colorway emerald bay i am spinning it this is one ply of what will become a two ply it was a four ounce braid split the braid in half this is two ounces the other two ounces We'll get plied with this two ply. I'm using it, spinning it to use as yarn in a shawl project in the future with some other of my hand spun. So I'm like kind of crunching to get this done, but I hate spinning it. So there's that. I'm like, I want to have the finished yarn to use in this shawl because I'm excited for the shawl. I hate spinning. Superwash Merino comb top. I think it is the most boring thing I could possibly spin. So I hate spinning that, but I just do it out of necessity. It's almost done. It's like officially, well, not officially. It's officially a third of the way done, but in my brain, it's halfway done. Because the first of two plies is done. Half. Really, it's a three-step Really, it's a three-step process. Ply, ply, ply them together. Three steps, only one of which is done. But in my head, halfway. <laughs> the, ooh, yes, okay. The second spinning thing I have to show you is my second thing of Cheviot. And I, I just started this last night, so it's really, 
there's almost nothing on this spindle. Come on. But you you saw this a couple weeks ago, I think. Um, I brought out my first thing of it to show you. I, I hesitate to say ply because I'm not going to ply them together. I'm going to ply them with something else that I'm about to show you. So this is my first ply of my first skein. <laughs> I toilet paper roll. Um, you know what? Needs must. So this is my first ply. <laughs> if you could call it that. The braid, I think it's either two or three episodes ago where I show you the braid, but it's like very, very pink, little bit of purple, little bit of peach. Spins beautifully. Um, my hope for this is to ply it with the thing I'm going to show you next. And make somewhere between a sport to a DK weight and then knit socks with it. That's the generalized plan. And so I, if you're a long time watcher, even if you're a short time watcher and you've watched one episode, you'll, you will have heard me rant about the color pink and how much I love it, but hate that I love it, apparently. <laughs> um, backstory, I always say, I am not a pink person. However, I feature a pink project in every single episode, and I have just acquired three braids of pink fiber. Yet I say I'm not a pink person, so you know what? Whatever, man. The thing that I'm going to be plying the pink Cheviot spin with, because I don't want to admit that I like the color pink, is this blue. <laughs> this blue braid of fiber that I dyed myself. This is Stroll Roving from Knit Picks, which is a 75% superwash merino, I know, 25% nylon, combed top. No, I just said I don't like spinning superwash merino. I didn't know how much I hated it when I bought this braid, because I bought it on sale like two or three, maybe even four, oof, years ago now, um, from their like November sale that they do every year where things are like <laughs> pennies um so I bought this a while ago and I've just I didn't know how much I hate I would hate spinning it I have never spun a merino nylon I could love it you never know so what I did um I'm going to ply this with the cheviot as I've mentioned I didn't want to ply the cheviot with something that would accentuate the pinkiness of it so I dyed this blue and purple and peach because the chevia is pink purple and peach so these two colors i tried to match as close as i could to the chevia braid and then i just have this like pastel -y blue hopefully that was this is like the softest thing ever but hopefully that was a good little strip tease what would that be yeah, you can see what it is. <laughs> what am I on today? Not enough coffee. That's what I'm on. So this blue, peach, and purple will get plied with the Cheviot as soon as I wind this onto another toilet paper roll. So this will get put on hold. I'll spin up that stroll. And I already have one ply that's ready to be plied. So that's what's next in spinning. Um, that's, <laughs> that's it, finally, a short episode, right? Um, I just wanted to give everyone a very big thank you because I was so nervous about launching my whole rebrand and everything like that. I was so scared um, and it, you know, new new things are scary, change is scary, but I was like, I want to do it anyway, and like, literally the stars are aligning, like now is my perfect time. I ranted to my little sister about how it's literally like astrologically <laughs> the perfect time to rebrand my business, everything like that, numerology wise and things, you know, things we don't need to get into, but I just, I was like so scared. It worked out well. I'm happy. I hope you guys are happy too. <sighs>
thank you again also to everyone who made purchases over the weekend. This was like, first like my horse won the Kentucky Derby, <laughs> then I like made so many new friends there were like i got such a big influx of followers on instagram i got such a big influx of sales on my etsy store i was so happy everything's going so well you know i don't want to jinx anything um but yeah i really everything's going all right i can't say it out loud now because i just knocked on wood about it but thank you is what i was trying to say um Exciting news in the future. I just got accepted into my first test knit. There wasn't like an application process. It was just kind of like if you want to you can join. Um, my first test knit is going to be the Carlisle DK sweater by Maddie Mo, who is momer01 on Instagram. I will put all of her information down below. I am so excited for this. I've never test knit before as I've just said. This will be my first. But the Carlisle like original sweater, which is knit in fingering weight, I've like had my eye on for so long and I haven't known like she has two versions. She has a raglan yoke and then a saddle shoulder um and i was like i don't know which pattern to buy because i kind of want to make them both but now that i'm test knitting for the dk version i can make them both if i so choose so i might i have ordered yarn it's going to be a new yarn which eh, it's going to be a new yarn that i've never used but i'm very excited um in my purchase in order to get free shipping i also bought yarn for a t-shirt i've never made a knit t-shirt but i'm I want one. So I bought some sport weight yarn for a t-shirt. I bought some heavy sport to light DK for this test knit sweater. When you see the color, you're gonna laugh at me. It's not pink, but it's pink adjacent. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm very excited, so I can't wait for that to come. You'll see it in some acquisitions next week. I know, first podcast episode where I haven't had an acquisition. It's crazy. Although this kind of feels like an acquisition, right? Because I dyed it. So it went from white to this. Kind of feels like I acquired it, you know? It's also like so poorly braided. But just excuse that. Um, yeah, so I'm. I just wanted to make a podcast episode under my new branding to really cement it in kind of like consummating the let's just put a sock in it for now because i'm saying things that i probably shouldn't be saying on the internet um and i am just going to wish you all a wonderful weekend because i'm filming this on thursday hopefully it'll be up on friday but i will wish you all a wonderful weekend thank you again so much for watching thank you for your support your comments your likes literally any way that you interact with me makes my heart sing so thank you everyone so much and i will see you again very soon on the next episode of the wool through the trees knitting podcast so until next time happy making